You can just follow your list or check out the What's New or What's Hot tabs, or you can dig a little deeper into the Netflix archives to find some truly outstanding under-the-radar films. Here's a look at some of the best stuff to add to your queue the next time you don't know what to watch. The Duffer brothers might allude to their Spielbergian influences and aim in Stranger Things, but Rim of the World director McGee unabashedly and cheerfully made an 80s-style kid adventure movie. Rim of the World mixes elements of E.T., The Goonies, and Red Dawn to create a similarly fun sci-fi action movie where teens save the day. If you find yourself alone, riding in green fields with the sun on your face, do not be troubled, for you are an Elysium, and you're already dead. The simple, irresistible premise. Four kids arrive at summer camp just in time for an invasion of the planet by wicked aliens. With the well-populated Rim of the World camp soon abandoned, it's up to this ragtag group of teens who don't quite fit in elsewhere to come together and thwart what amounts to the end of the world. They'll have to do it all without adults, computers, or much of anything. Except, of course, for bikes. Heaven of Horror says of this light white diversion, This is an absolute treat for fans of sci-fi, adventure, action, and monster movies. After bringing so much attention and accolades to Netflix via his unforgettable performance as Sheriff Hopper on Stranger Things, it's no surprise that David Harbour has free reign to do whatever he wants at the streaming giant. And what he wants to do is a meta, sci-fi, and horror-laced mockumentary about his life, a collaboration with Arrested Development writer John Levenstein. The result is a short special that's a bit hard to define. Frankenstein's Monsters Monster Frankenstein is based around a mid-70s made-for-TV production of the two-man theatrical version of Frankenstein. The twist is that Harbour plays his own father, also an actor named David Harbour, as the two generations play both Dr. Frankenstein and his monstrous creation at the same time. To round out this tribute from the younger Harbour to the fictional older Harbour are clips of the actor from other vintage fictional productions like The Crying Detective and The Actor's Trunk. The whole thing winds up both a love letter to the craft of acting and an affectionate send-up of the entire notion of playing pretend for a living. This 2017 indie horror movie by writer-director Trey Edward Schultz feels like an old-fashioned kind of horror movie. Sure, it trades in spooky monsters and frightening imagery, but it's more about conjuring up what's already inside the viewer, the unspeakable dread of things yet to come. It Comes at Night is set deep in a remote woodland area not long after an epidemic has wiped out most of human life on Earth. It's where the small family of Paul, Sarah, and young Travis try to survive on what little supplies they've got and hope that they don't get infected with the plague. But then danger comes looking for them in the form of a roving family man named Will, who is maybe not the innocent guy he claims to be. Hey, listen, I don't even have to shoot you, you know, I could just leave you out here. You want this water? Yeah. You make me believe you. Still, Sarah invites Will and his family into their homestead on the theory of strength in numbers. But that only seems to invite more danger, most of it impossibly horrific, lurking out there in the forest. The London Evening Standard's Charlotte O'Sullivan said of the film, It made me so tense I could hardly breathe, let alone think. Vietnam is home to a quickly developing movie culture and industry, and the action thriller Fury teams up two of its stars, director Le Van Kiet and actress Veronica Ng, best known to Western audiences as Gunner Page Tico in Star Wars The Last Jedi. In Fury, Ng portrays a former criminal overlord who now works as the muscle for a loan shark in the city of Kuntho, shaking down delinquents with a shattering of a kneecap or two. That violence comes home to roost when her daughter, Mai, is kidnapped and seemingly sold to black market organ dealers. Ng, propelled by equal parts rage, guilt, and love, takes to the seedy sides of Ho Chi Minh City to get her daughter back in one piece. Fury is a tight, often sparse ride which includes plenty of novel set pieces, beautiful cinematography, and an intense motorbike chase. Sometimes the scariest parts of a scary movie don't come from monsters or gore, but from menace and dread. That's what propels the precisely paced Earthquake Bird, based on the novel of the same name by Susanna Jones. Alicia Vikander of Ex Machina returns to the kind of moody, unsettling cinema that made her famous, portraying Lucy, a Swedish expatriate who has settled into a life in 1989 Tokyo that is repetitive, bland, and mundane. It's by design, as she's looking to flee from and forget past traumas. She works as a translator, living alone while maintaining some low-key friendships and playing cello in a string quartet. 
One day, Lucy meets Teiji, a noodle shop worker and aspiring photographer. She enchants him and lets him make portraits of her. I've never had my picture taken before. Not properly. Then I am the first. But just when it seems like her icy veneer is starting to thaw, Lucy's life is interrupted by a brash American named Lily, who goes missing and is presumed dead. Is the mysterious Lucy responsible, either via conscious act or her status as a tragedy magnet? Or is she merely an unreliable narrator? Gabriel Silver of the Detroit Metro Times said, Earthquake Bird is an enjoyable neo-noir film with enough twists and turns to leave you thinking long after the ending. Yes, it's a thriller set at a lake deep in the woods and a young person dies very early on in the movie. Apart from that setup, and the notion that an unrepentant killer could strike at any time, every time I die is as far away as can be from your typical horror. The film follows the forlorn Sam, who is still recovering from the childhood tragedy of losing a sister to drowning. Now a paramedic, he keeps his mind off his troubles with an ongoing affair with a married woman. That is, until he's killed at the hands of her husband, returning soldier Tyler. That's when Every Time I Die takes a turn. Drew's unsettled consciousness floats into the bodies of his friends, attempting to warn them that they could be the next to die. The film's tightly packed 98-minute running time and minuscule budget serve it well, as it winds up a rarity in cinema, a pensive thriller. Andrew Stover of Film Inquiry said of Every Time I Die, It's a captivating little tale about self-image with a mystical and poignant touch. Don is just a regular guy, a lawyer whose life has taken a few bad turns because of his own bad decisions. Seeking a fresh start before his wife Liz gives birth to their first child, he buys a decrepit old house way out in suburban Chicago. He moves in first so that he can pour himself into renovating this old spooky manor. Somehow, Don doesn't go screaming back into the city when he discovers that the house bleeds and excretes a strange white fluid out of its pipes, or when he keeps discovering human and animal corpses and freaky ghostly monsters. As if all that isn't enough, he's got to contend with a flirty neighbor who may know more about the source of the house's horrors than she's letting on. Girl on the Third Floor marks the screenwriting and directorial debut of veteran horror producer Travis Stevens. The Haunted House movie is a well-traveled genre, but Stevens tweaks the formula enough to leave audiences guessing, entertained, and unsettled. Based on the originality and success of The Matrix, Hollywood has frequently given the Wachowskis a blank check to make whatever visually dazzling, unabashedly earnest, and totally bonkers sci-fi movie they felt like making. One of those movies is Jupiter Ascending, which stars Mila Kunis as Jupiter Jones, a Russian-American house cleaner and amateur astronomer. Through a string of events that involve selling her eggs to pay for a telescope, she finds out she's some kind of space princess. The Abrasax clan, a prominent galactic family, wants her dead, or maybe just control of her birthright. Fortunately, she's got the steadfast protection from Kane Wise, played by Channing Tatum, a half-human, half-wolf super soldier. Jupiter Ascending is a bit of an overstuffed sci-fi extravaganza, and it has everything. From jetpacks to giant spaceships to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat to Sean Bean playing a rogue B-man. Stephanie Cook of Rogue's Portal manages to sum up the film's many joys in one pithy remark. Ever wondered what Cinderella, The Godfather, and Teen Wolf would look like if they were one movie? No? Well, too bad, because Jupiter Ascending exists. It's not pretty, is it? Clipped and stripped. The mark of a court martial skyjacket. Still haven't answered my question. Do you want your wings back or not? You had wings? Why are period horror films so much scarier than ones set in the modern day? Is it because the relative ignorance and brutality of the past adds an extra element of terror? Or are images of Victorian-era Londoners in bleak clothes living bleak lives inherently unsettling? That could be the answer, although blood-hungry monsters, freaky islands, and blood cults are scary too. Fortunately, Apostle showcases all that and much more. Set in 1905, Apostle follows a man named Thomas, who leaves London for an island paradise off the coast of Wales. It's run by a cult, and Thomas must retrieve his sister, taken to the island by the group and held for ransom. He poses as a new adherent to gain favor with the cult members and their leader, Prophet Malcolm, all while aiming to get his sister back. However, things get awfully sticky for Thomas when he realizes that the cult's teachings aren't exactly crazy. Those jars of blood everyone carries around to collect their blood sacrifice to the island? The island needs that blood. 
Imagine if Little Shop of Horrors mashed up with the Wicker Man and you've got a puzzle. She gifted me her wisdom and trusted me that I may enrich your minds. According to the thoughtful sci-fi movie I.O., humanity is doomed to never change its ways, and in the not-too-distant future, Earth becomes uninhabitable. Fortunately, scientists have found a new home for mankind on Io, one of Jupiter's many moons. A scientist named Sam is among the handful of humans who haven't made the migration to Io just yet, staying behind to test the water and air for signs of decreasing toxicity, as well as to raise bees that she hopes could someday pollinate and help save the planet's vegetation. Time is running out, and certain catastrophic events lead Sam to head with another survivor, Micah, to a shuttle that will take them into space. Io is full of philosophical and mental tension as these two bear witness to what could be Earth's final, extinctive whimper, but also a newfound hope for the future. Lee Monson of Birth Movies Death says, If you're looking for science fiction that makes manifest the anxieties of a dying world, our dying world, then Io is a good place to start. We weren't ready for this. No matter what warning we got from people like your father. What if John Wick were more like an 80s movie? More violent, more nihilistic, more violence-soaked, and with more absolutely unnecessary nudity, all with a gleeful undercurrent of shock humor permeating the whole thing. That's Polar, the bonkers, messy story of one man's quest to relax and secure his pension. Mass Mikkelsen, the Danish actor best known for his starring role on the stylish TV version of Hannibal, stars as Duncan Wiesla, aka the Black Kaiser. Duncan is a highly effective assassin forced by his oddly corporate bosses to retire at age 50 and enjoy his golden years. Of course, his company plans to kill him to avoid paying his payout. From a lovely cabin in Montana, Duncan has to fight off some violent attacks while also dealing with PTSD and forging a friendship with a neighbor with demons of her own. I know they pay you well for this, Vivian. I'm still gonna give you a chance to walk out of here alive. For old time's sake. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.